Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we've got another Princess Connect video and we will be talking about clan battles. My name is Lace and unfortunately today is going to be a long one. So before we actually get into the topic of clan battles, let's talk about some prerequisites, right? So I'm going to assume that you started around soft launch. You've managed to actually R7 and max refine your main team which means that you can comfortably clear main story. You're also able to clear very hard dungeon. This is very important. That's sheer cliff ruins, by the way, by either whaling or by doing the tank cheese. This one's probably the one that most people haven't done, but I will definitely prioritize the VH dungeon before even starting to think about this, right? And the reason is because you're gonna be having some income coming from that dungeon, which will help you get some high priority targets from the dungeon shop, such as Yukari, Maho, Nozomi, Buka. Like there's just, there's too much value in it. So that definitely takes priority. So with all of that being said, this is really actually a pivotal point of your Princess Connect journey. Do you want to focus on clan battle or arena? And and I guess the biggest thing that separates these two paths is because it determines who you roll for. A lot of the units will be great for both, but your resources and pulling priority will be will kind of vary. So Jin, probably our first mana, is pretty much like our premier PvE clan battle tank, right? But she's a little bit less useful in arena. And obviously the longer and longer we play, we'll, we'll definitely be able to do both quite well. But at this point in time, we do need to make a choice in the beginning. So let's get into it. For this video, I'm going to make the following assumptions. We don't have all of those quality of life features such as um, team recommendation function or like time carry over or the multi-target bosses, like all of that. I'm just going to start with as vanilla as we can. We are starting on the same month as JP, which is February. You'll And, and you'll see why this is kind of important later. It's not really, to be honest. We'll, set, we'll follow the same type of schedule as JP. That is the event will occur at the end of the month and our boss rotations will be similar, to, if not the same as JP. So with that being said, let me give you a quick rundown of what clan battle actually is. So essentially what's happening is that when the clan battle occurs, over these next few days, you have the opportunity to challenge these bosses three times a day. Each clan battle comes in a set of five bosses. To challenge the boss, you actually need to use CP, which you accumulate as you consume stamina. So for every 300 points of stamina, you will gain one CP. That means that you need 900 points of stamina to be able to get three CP, which equals to three tries a day. Again, every clan battle will have a progression of five bosses in which you can only move on to the next boss if the current boss is completed. After completing the whole set of bosses, so clearing from one to five, you would then restart at the beginning and depending on how many times you've actually cleared the entire circuit this will change maybe their attack pattern it will change the damage counted towards the ranking uh, there's multipliers and stuff uh, etc each character can only be used once a day therefore if there are three attacks and there are five characters to a team you need about 15 characters However, you can actually bring a support unit to each battle. So you can definitely get away with having 12 like pretty juiced out units and three supports. So I'm not 100% sure about this one, but I think you can only use supports that are within 30 levels of your own level. Sorry, let me get a screenshot of what it actually looks like. So we've got this guy. So that's kind of what it looks like, right? So you have to clear the first one and then you progress on. After you finish the last one, you come back to the start with this and that. So you're doing all of this with your clan mates to try to deal the most damage as possible. That is the main goal of this. Your clan's total damage is then used to determine your clan's ranking against all of the other clans, and you will receive rewards that are aligned to your ranking. The better the rankings, the better the rewards. So if I show you quickly the rewards, I believe it's this one. First to 50th clan, everybody gets 5,000 jewels. Everybody gets clan coins and everybody gets 30 Makoto pieces. The clan coins you can actually use to buy more Makoto pieces, and I'll definitely recommend it. So priority for this shop, is five star Makoto and get her UE and then think about buying something else. So in addition to the clan ranking reward, you also actually get a small reward every time you kill a boss. So that just consists of like the standard equipment, coins, shards, etc. that kind of thing. The most important thing to note about this is that there is actually a practice match feature in which you can actually try run different comps uh, and run them through the battle unlimited amount of times. This is probably the most important feature to be honest because it lets you work out when to time the UBs and become very familiar with the boss patterns. So with that being said, let's get into like the finer details and what we need to do to prepare for it. First, we're going to have to sort out our teams. In the early game, like now, <laughs> for each team, you're going to generally be looking at the following formation, which is one tank, two attackers, and two supports, and a little bit of healing. So in your tank category, Agree. you've got Nozomi. Hopefully you're farming for Nozomi in dungeon right now. Dungeon is super easy to get. Nozomi is super easy to get. You'll be fine. In the future, we'll get Jun and Luka. 
Uh, Jun is our premier tank for clan battles because not only does she tank, she also does defense down, which I will talk about later. For attackers, especially for like the first year or two, or we're going to be focused on single target attackers. So I'm talking the Makoto, Hiori, Kari, Suzuna, Shiori, Eriko, Jita, Shinobu, uh, Tamaki, and maybe Anna, uh, if you have support for her. So let's go through each one. Makoto, she is the unit to have for clan battle. She gives defense down. And what that means is that the rest of your units are going to be doing more damage. The rest of them are pretty much extremely good at dealing damage, single target damage, and that's really it. You got Susanna who has the guaranteed critical attack, blah, 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 right? In the future, you need to be looking out for Christina, who's the first prefez unit. So she will give a defense down, similar to Makoto. Very, very good. We've got S Kiaru. S means um, summer, summer Kiaru. So, so she will give magic defense down. And Kyoka, who does big magic damage. As for support and healing, it's a little bit less defined here. So we've got units like uh, Yukari, because she's a goddess everywhere. <laughs> Saren, Okoro, she's she's big, big unit, right? She gives you the action speed uh, increase. She gives you the physical attack buff, great support, and also has self-sustain, which will be very important as we move away from the tanks meta. We've got Mitsuki, who also does the defense down with an AoE, but these are kind of like just the units to get you started because as you can tell, there are going to be a lot of units. And, and I think what's more important to take away from this is the, the archetypes, right? You want defense down. You want single target damage. You want some level of healing. The bare minimum amount of healing that can get you through the stage is what you need. But you may not necessarily need that Yui, because if your Yukari can actually pull the healing weight, then you don't need an actual dedicated healer. However, let me come back to it. The most important mechanic again is defense down. So you got like Makoto, Jun, Christina, Anna, uh, Eskiaru, etc. They're extremely, extremely valuable. This means that these are the target units that you need to roll for. So of these ones, Jun is the first banner. Christina is prefez uh, six months in, I think. Uh, Anna is already available and Eskiaru is one of the first summer units that we'll hopefully get. So what does it mean to actually prepare for them? So this is why I kind of went through that prerequisite checklist at the very start, right? You're gonna just want to juice them as much as you can, R7 or whatever, right? The best thing you can do now, I guess, is you can juice the ones which also kind of have like a dual use with arena. And so you can actually use them for arena as you go through. Yeah, and those are the priority ones. So obviously this would be like your Tamaki, your Nozomi, your, um, honestly, actually, I'll just choose whoever, right? Because we're just way too early in the game to actually be doing targeted things, right? By the time we get to launch, by the time we get to clan battles, we are going to be prepared if you're watching this today, which is the 3rd of January. If you're watching this later, then maybe you do need to be a little bit more targeted in who you get up first. So as the game goes on, what's gonna happen is that we're actually gonna be transitioning into a more attacker focused meta, because again, the most important statistic from these clan battles is actually the total damage dealt, right? So what this means is that you may see tanks and stuff fall off and our DPSs that also have like maybe self-sustain or stuff like that to actually enter the teams. Okay, that felt like really fast. Uh, I hope you guys got that. Now, next. <laughs> <laughs> There's more additional information and tips to keep in mind when we get there. Number one, play at one time speed because you need to be really safe at getting those UBs off. You guys already know how slow-mo one time speed is. It's really, really slow. But what that means is that you can also be extremely precise in timing your UB. Number two, auto versus manual union bursts. So if you're not confident in using your union burst without skipping your characters like skills or their animations, then use auto. So it's just good practice to turn auto on when you need it so that the skill can finish casting. And then after that, the computer will do the union burst right when it can. Learn the boss pattern so that you can best time your union bursts via the practice mode. The boss will use actions that actually reduce your TP and stun you, which will disrupt your skills. It's super annoying. So you just need to learn when those occur and then plan your union bursts around those. You need to coordinate with your clan to do this, right? It's really important because the weaker players should be focusing on the earlier bosses and the stronger players should be focused on bosses three to five. And on top of that, you've got people who are predominantly building magic teams versus physical teams, right? Try not to mix the two teams. And when you're running one of these two teams, what it means is that you should actually save your attacks until your clan gets to, for example, if your team is... If you're predominantly running a magic team, which is super lit, then you're going to be wanting to attack the magic weak boss. And it's definitely not always about the last boss. The last tip, I guess, is to do it at the end of the day when you're the strongest possible because you've expended all of your stamina to upgrade your units. Last thing I want to talk about is actually just running through one of the bosses, right? So, so assuming we're going to get the February launch or the February boss, for example, I'll take this guy, right? He is the boss for February. So if we go down, you actually see a bunch of his skills and you realize, oh, Magic, magic damage. What should I do to mitigate this? Oh, Yukari, 
oh, Kuka, oh, you know, it's like a lot of this theory that we learned earlier on that's being applied now. If you're in a serious clan battle clan, I'm, I have no doubt that they already have this kind of information, right? Yeah, you just need to have a look at who's going to come up next and go for it. I may have missed a couple of things, but hopefully in a nutshell, that will give you a summary of the clan battles generally. I'm going to attach all of the resources down below, so just hit them up and read it thoroughly. I've definitely tailored this video towards people like us who are playing on global server. We're about a month in, but yeah, if I do get anything wrong or you think there's something that we should know, do let us know down in the comments. I would appreciate it. Everyone else is going to appreciate it. It's not a, okay, it kind of is a competition, isn't it? <laughs> Guys, this is the end of the video. Good luck with your clan battles. I'm going to leave a secret message here. The secret message is Makoto o kick. That's the, that is the secret message. So if you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop the secret message down in the comments below. That just tells me who actually gets to the end of the video. Otherwise, that's it for today. I'd appreciate it if you would sub, like, follow, oh, whatever it is, man. But again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.